Supreme Court had been asked to rule on whether draft legislation being put forward by the Scottish Parliament would be legal. The First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, said she was disappointed but respected the ruling. Here's our correspondent, Jim Shaw. Delivering the judgment of the Supreme Court, Lord Reid said they'd been able to conclude their deliberations more quickly than expected because all the five judges had reached a unanimous view. He explained that the law which established the Scottish Parliament did not give it powers over matters affecting the union between Scotland and England or the UK Parliament at Westminster. The Scottish Government had argued that a referendum would not have the legal effect of breaking up the union, but would only be advisory or consultative. But Lord Reid said that the result of a referendum would strengthen or weaken the union depending on its result, and for that reason it was not within Holyrood's power. Hours. The SNP leader at Westminster, Ian Blackford, raised the Supreme Court ruling a few minutes ago at Prime Minister's questions at Westminster, claiming that Rishi Sunak kept blocking an independent referendum. This morning, the Supreme Court clarified a point of law that the very point of democracy in this union is now at stake, and democracy will not be denied. Because whether Westminster likes it or not, last year, the people of Scotland voted for a Scottish Parliament with a majority in the mandate to deliver an independence. Well, the Prime Minister had this response. I think that the people of Scotland want us to be working on fixing the major challenges that we collectively face, whether that's the economy, supporting the NHS, or indeed supporting Ukraine. Now is the time for politicians to work together, and that's what this government will do. In other news, most schools across Scotland will be closed tomorrow as members of the biggest teachers union, the EIS, strike in a dispute over pay. A new improved offer from employer COSLA was dismissed by the union yesterday as insulting. It says more strike dates will be announced tomorrow. The Education Secretary, Shirley Ann Somerville, said she's very disappointed at the action. Our news correspondent is Jimmy McIver. Now, the problem that the Scottish Government has, as, as indeed it has when it comes to all the questions over public sector pay, is simply that with a finite budget for the current financial year, finding more money for pay inevitably means finding that money somewhere. So it's going to mean some difficult or perhaps unpopular decisions. At least seven people have been killed in a mass shooting at a supermarket in Virginia. A man believed to be the store manager opened fire at a Walmart in Chesapeake last night. He then turned the gun on himself. A study has found there's no extra risk to a woman or her baby if she becomes pregnant within a few months of a miscarriage or abortion. Currently, the World Health Organization recommends at least a six-month gap to give prospective mothers time to recover. But the research in Norway has found there was no major difference in outcomes if a new pregnancy had happened sooner. Ruth Bender Attic is from the Miscarriage Association. Most people will know when it's right for them to start trying again. For some people, they desperately want to fill that gap, but other people will want to wait a longer period of time. So what this is doing is, is it's giving women and their partners the confidence to start to try again when they feel it's right for them. Ashley Jensen is to take over as the lead character in the BBC TV series Shetland. Her character will take over the post left vacant by D.I. Jimmy Perez, played by Douglas Henschel. Our arts correspondent Polly McLean has more. The TV show Shetland was originally based on the novels of crime writer Anne Cleves. The central character was D.I. Jimmy Perez, played by Douglas Henschel, who announced this summer that the seventh season would be his last. Today it's been announced that Scots actress Ashley Jensen will take over his beat. She plays D.I. Ruth Calder, a native Shetlander who returns to the Isles after 20 years with the Met in London. Filming for the new season will begin in the spring in various locations across Scotland, including Shetland. And for now, that's BBC Radio Scotland News. Now let's have a look at the weather forecast. Quite a bit of rain around. Joy Dunlop has the details.
Yes, good afternoon. It's been a quite unsettled start to the day for some. We've seen a band of persistent heavy rain pushing in from the southwest. That will continue to move northwards across the country this afternoon, looking to reach Orkney by this evening. But behind that, some drier conditions developing once more, even some limited brightness, but also the odd bluster shower. It's quite breezy out there too, especially in the Northern Isles, where we have gale force gusts and remaining chilly in the far north, highs generally of 6 to 10 Celsius. Now tonight, rain will continue to move northwards, pushing into Shetland with frequent blustery showers also pushing in from the west for a time. By morning, however, tending to turn dry and then a quite cold night under the clear skies, especially in the far north. We could be looking at a touch of frost there, wind remaining brisk. And then tomorrow, actually a dry start to the day with plenty of sunshine, but yet again throughout the day, we will see cloud building and heavy rain sweeping in. That will be accompanied by strong winds and the Met Office have issued a yellow warning for the southwest, where we could see gusts reaching 50 miles an hour at time it's going to be very wet and very blustery there for a time, but still feeling on the mild side. That's your forecast. Get the latest news on your smart speaker whenever you want. Just say, play BBC News for Scotland. You're listening to Lunchtime Live with Vary Stewart. Now, let's get more reaction on the decision by the Supreme Court to deny the Scottish Government the power to stage a second independence referendum without the UK Government's consent. Let's speak to the SNP's Constitution Secretary, Angus Robertson. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon. Well, we'll get to the detail of it in a moment, but first, your, your reaction to the ruling. Well, I'm, I'm disappointed, obviously. We accept uh, and respect the Supreme Court's uh, judgment. It was on the interpretation of law rather than on the democratic mandate for a referendum. So I'm sorry that we're not going to be able to go ahead with a referendum next year as planned. And we had been planning to do that on the basis of a, a Scottish election yes, the last year that was dominated by this question and which returned a record majority of MSPs uh, to the Scottish Parliament for this to happen. So we're now in a, a, a difficult democratic situation in that people in Scotland have voted for the right to have a say on this question, but they're being denied it by legislation in the form of the Scotland Act 1998, which has just been ruled on today, and by a UK government that is refusing uh, to work with the Scottish government uh, to allow such a referendum to go ahead. So it raises real questions about what kind of state the United Kingdom is. It's supposed to be a voluntary union, but um, in a voluntary union, people should be able to decide about their own futures and not have it blocked by others. So I think for, for everybody, regardless of what side of the argument we are on, on independence, yes or no, I think today is a very sad day for anybody who believes that the UK is a voluntary union. Yeah, well, it is a bit debatable, isn't it, that people were voting purely on the independence issue at the last election. But if we move forward, uh, now you want the next general election to be a de facto vote on independence. How would that work? Well, firstly, I'm not going to gloss over uh, last year's election uh, result. Um, it was a record uh, return of MSPs from pro-referendum parties who were running on that as a key issue in their manifesto. Yes, a key that can issue. simply, indeed, it was, but that cannot be glossed over uh, as, as if that is something which is not significant. It's extremely significant. If we cast our mind back, the UK uh, Conservative Party, led by David Cameron, um, made moves towards a Brexit referendum with 37% of the vote. In Scotland, we are being denied a referendum on our future post-Brexit, despite having a majority in the Parliament. This is a really, really serious moment in time where we all need to reflect on the, the role that Scotland plays within the United Kingdom and the fact that our largest and neighbouring partner, which is represented by the Conservative Party, is denying uh, Scotland its self-determination, its ability to de decide its, its own future. Okay. That's, it's a we've come to a really serious fork in the road. So going forward then, how is this de facto vote going to work? Well, firstly, there is there is no alternative to democracy, and as Democrats, we we respected the result of the election last year, the mandate that it gave uh, MSPs in the Scottish Parliament to go forward with a referendum. That is now being blocked. It doesn't need to be that way. The UK government can, as it did before, after the 2011 Scottish Parliament election result, uh, agree to a Section 30 order to allow a referendum to go uh, ahead. But okay. that is being blocked. That is the democracy denial. Okay, of the let's of the look at what. Where you go at, at, from now? 
well, I've just said, we, we use democracy because there is no other alternative right. to democracy. The first side is, first point of it is, we will continue to prosecute the case for Scotland uh, being a functioning democracy, and we will do that in the elections that people are able to vote in. The other part of the public debate, of course, is uh, those people who are denying in democracy being held to uh, account by the likes of the BBC, uh, being forced to answer questions, because for those who watched the Prime Minister today at Prime Minister questions, they will have noticed he did not reflect or explain on his change in policy towards a voluntary union of the United Kingdom, nor on breaking the democratic okay. mandate that the people of Scotland gave to MSPs to introduce and allow a referendum to take place next year. When okay. those who have those views are forced to explain themselves, it's a very hollow argument. OK, but I am now asking you how this de facto vote in independence would work in practice. By people going to the ballot box and casting their votes in an election. That's right. how What's democracy. In your manifesto? That's it. Well, manifestos uh, are uh, are uh, are written in the run-up to uh, elections. Sure, but is there just one sentence? Do you want independence or not? By, well, I, you, f forgive me, we are literally, let me try and work this out, what, three hours after a Supreme Court ruling and you would expect us to have our manifesto for the next election. But you already told two us years, it was going to be a de facto years, vote months years. ago. You must have worked if, if it you out. Let me, if, you let me, if you let me finish. Well, uh, you also know that the First Minister uh, held a press conference this morning where she announced a special conference at the the SNP will be holding in the new year where these issues will be debated, will be discussed. So many, many of these issues will be agreed at that point. But can I just make them, we, we today could have been having a conversation around the Supreme Court agreeing that the Scottish Parliament could, could go ahead and uh, hold a referendum. That's what we've been preparing. That's what we've been working towards. That is, that is the work that we have been trying to undertake. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that in the form of a referendum next year. So we're going to have to use the Democratic means at our disposal, which will be the next elections that are upcoming. OK, no doubt many people will want the next election to be voted on purely on one issue, but there will be many, many other people who do not want that, who'd rather choose a government on the basis of how they're going to solve the cost of living crisis, for example. You would be denying them that opportunity. It's up to every and each individual to vote how they say. It's not for me to gainsay people's ability to vote for any party for whatever reason. But if parties clearly stand on a manifesto that something should happen in a democracy, that's what should happen, which is why I'm not and will never be prepared to gloss over the fact that this issue has already been decided as a matter of principle in the Scottish Parliament elections of, of last year. The fact that we're having to go to the country again, I would point out, the SNP have won eight elections back to back. This is not a normal functioning democracy where the people's wishes at the ballot box are denied. That's why today is such a serious day because we are able to see in the clear light of day that the UK is not functioning properly as a democracy and it's certainly no longer a voluntary union. OK, so if we don't have the detail though on how this de facto vote would work, let's just say for argument's sake you achieve what you want to in that election. What's that actually going to change if we still have a Westminster government that says no? Well, I, I cannot give up on democracy, even if others are prepared to do so. So I have to act in, in good faith. I would point out, of course, that in Scotland, this is not the first time that a democratic um, re result in relation to Scottish self-government has denied. I'm old enough to remember that there was a referendum in 1979 for devolution that a majority voted for. A Scottish parliament was denied, but then one had to uh, then uh, bring back a referendum, which is what happened in 1997, leading to the Scottish Parliament. Scottish democracy unfortunately uh, is characterised by Westminster governments and parliaments saying no, 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 no and then eventually yes. Well, it is going to, to my mind, if the people of Scotland wish there to be a referendum nobody should stand in their way. The longer this goes on, the worse it will be, worse it will be for unionists who will be exposed by uh, myself and no doubt media interviewers who will seek, uh, to seek answers from them to explain why it is that they are blocking democracy it is not normal to live in a country where people are not allowed to say uh, what their views are on their future. That is not a normal functioning democracy. It's a very serious charge How, well, and we are in a very serious place in this country. However history. morally wrong you believe the situation to be, what is this next election actually going to change if the power still lies with the Westminster government to say no? 
will the power power for Scotland decide will to decide will only ultimately rest with the people of Scotland. It cannot, it should not rest with others. That is why when it comes to an election, it is the people who should decide. I don't know what one is suggesting is an alternative course to democracy, because as a Democrat, I'm not prepared to countenance that. I will always use democratic elections, and it is for the people to decide how they cast their vote. Having elected a record majority to the Scottish Parliament last year, I'm sure those people, but also many others who will now be concerned about the nature of democracy in Scotland and the United Kingdom, will look at the next election and will no doubt use their votes wisely. Angus Robertson, thank you very much for coming on to the programme this lunchtime. That's Angus Robertson, the SNP's Constitution Secretary. And we'll be getting lots more reaction throughout the programme. In fact, right now, Ian Blackford is on his feet in the Commons uh, asking an urgent question on this issue. We'll be coming back to that in just a moment. But now, the death toll is rising in America following a shooting yesterday at a Walmart in Chesapeake in Virginia.